Well, obviously, first it keeps them busy. That said, uh, you have to be aware of what is now described as overlap syndrome, which is a combination of both. And there are, the, there are a lot of debate whether overlap is both condition present in one person or, or, or a third condition that has features of both. Uh, be it as it may, uh, asthma, at least a pure asthma, is most an inflammatory condition mediated by eosinophils and COPD by neutrophils. But uh, a lot of their, tr their, their treatment modalities overlap, so you can use that. And you have to identify to what extent inflammation is part of it and treat that separately. Right now, uh, there, there are the developments that basically hone on exactly the pathology where it is in terms of biochemistry of that. However, use of uh, uh, anti-IgE uh, agents, uh, maybe use of uh, thermoplasty, which is changing the way the muscles work in the asthma. Uh, it's more debatable. Uh, these are right now things that are being done and kind of have moved from research into practice there are other modalities for targeted treatment that still are in research part, but they are going to be translated to practice part. As it is right now, it's chronic. But if you can manipulate the genome, you will be able to cure them too, and hopefully that will come in future. We still need more information in terms of Having the experience of uh, 5, 10, 15 years of treating a large number of patients and see better numbers, what is available now shows that these treatments not only improve the symptoms, it seems that also to at least slow down the progression of disease. And that's a big deal. Up to now, we could improve the life expectancy and function by reducing complications only. Uh, so in that sense, it's a step forward. But uh, since uh, pulmonary fibrosis depends on a balance between a creation of a scar tissue in the lung and resolution of a scar tissue in the lung. We need a lot more information in order to learn everything about it and have treatments that are focused. Uh, but certainly, it, it, at least current medications are added to that, change the armamentarium that a physician has in order to offer to his patients. Empirical data is quite available. Anytime you create steps that basically creates a barrier, it does have an effect, at least uh, statistically. Uh, you can't stop everybody, but as you make it more difficult, you tax cigarettes, you uh, ask people not to smoke indoor, you, you, uh, you uh, create some parks that are off limits, all of them reduce not only reduce the smoking because it makes it more difficult, but creates a culture of not considering it something normal. I remember years ago, you go to even physicians' meetings, and the whole room, you couldn't see anything because it was filled with smoke. We have the, the opportunity and privilege of working in an ICU setting that is staffed and manned, or woman for that matter, by pulmonologist, critical care physicians who are 24 hours there and work with a team, including uh, pulmonary and critical care trainees, residents, nursing staff. So that allows them to uh, basically monitor all patients at all time. Uh, there is something called bundles that basically checklist of conditions you do in order to reduce complications. And application of those bundles has greatly, greatly improved and reduce the number of ventilator-associated pneumonias. Now they are a rarity, while 20 years ago they were common findings. They have to basically take the same principle and, apply, and try to develop local environment for it to, to bear fruition. Uh, one good thing would be, and it's developing, is to have systems that connects the smaller hospital with bigger hospitals. That allows you to basically import or transplant expertise and protocols, although you have to adjust it to your local facilities. 
Obviously, the, the, the basics are the same. You take care of pulmonary patients. And in, in real practice, as we are practicing today, the pulmonologist is part of his practice in an office setting, a part of it is in the hospital setting. Uh, and whether you work directly for the hospital or yourself shouldn't matter much. Um, but uh, being associated and working with a major academic medical center allows you to have other services and expertise available to you that you know, makes it much easier to treat those patients, allows you to think about the situation that otherwise you may not consider it. And especially being in a teaching environment, when you are teaching uh, multiple layers of students, residents, fellows, and so on, uh, always makes your mind being more inquisitive and looking for conditions that others may miss. So I think in that sense, an advantage. However, uh, all of our colleagues, even in a totally community setting, are doing a great public service, I believe, and we are supportive of all of our colleagues.